was still in our temple, and then he came to visit me in Chicago, he stayed with me in 1987, and uh, I had a personal relationship with him, which was not very visible, but it was very spiritual. And we didn't need to say many words, and uh, I mean, it was very sad when he has left us. It's sad for us, but it's a happy thing for him because I'm hoping, and I know that he actually reached the parade. Of the suffering that endured many, many years with cancer. It's very sad for us, but it's a good chance for him to be rejuvenated in a higher level of cancer. Yes, she had a special personality. He was kind to everyone, and he was also very, very spiritual. And uh, our relationship was not very well known, and we kept it up. Uh, to me, Gekshala was, he stayed in my apartment in Chicago and we had a great time and there was a lot of talk. We had a translator and a little joke because him and my mother would speak to each other but not understand. I could not understand a lot of times what he would say, but my mother and him communicated perfectly. So I would call it special English because both of them spoke broken English. At the time, he still had a voice, and he was not ill yet. And I would laugh, so my mother was actually my translator. She was in order to communicate to Gesha. And I wish him the best level any spiritual being can reach in Nirvana. He was a great, great person and a great monk. And he added a lot to the common community. Despite all the hardship he had caused, I know he forgave us. I know he forgave me. I know he forgave other common people. And I just hope in the future, because he was very, and the common the community will combine closer. And I'm trying to reach that. It's not easy, because we have good intervention. But one thing we all believe in is the Dalai Lama. You see the Dalai Lama. We're all very grateful and we all flock to see him to get his blessing. But on a moral level, same way in Gershaw. Gershaw was a great teacher, he was a great teacher, he was a great teacher, saying that our new Gershaw here is not enough. And uh, we all have to do with the future, not the past. We have to pray for his soul. We have to pray that he will reach a good level. He was very good to the whole community. Thank you for coming. Enjoy it for and the honor of Thank you. Thank you, Kumar. And we have a Gesha has been here since 1983. And he has a uh, son of member. And uh, Lisa, can you briefly talk about your experience of Kishina? Uh, Hello, my name is Lisa Kishina. I have known Kishina since he came here in 1983. My first experience with him is when we saw him walking in Albany going to the supermarket at 9 o'clock at night in the dark in that unsafe neighborhood. We were fortunate enough to pick him up, take him to the supermarket, and deliver him back to the temple in one piece and safely. And that is my first experience with him. Other experiences, he became a teacher in 1995. I was doing a, uh, from one of my college classes, I had to interview someone from a different religion, and I chose Geshe Menom as my interviewer. From that moment on, I continued to pray with him every Sunday. We would meet, and the one thing he told me is when I first asked him, can I come here to pray, he said, if I'm doing this for academic purposes, I am not allowed to come and pray with him. I can only do it if it's coming from my heart. So that was my first moment, and that's when I started learning more about compassion and thinking of others rather than myself all the time. I had
had the opportunity to travel to India with him in 1999 with our Sangha, and we spent 30 days in India, staying in hostels, going to religious sites, seeing Bodh Gaya, Dharamsala, teachings with His Holiness the Dalai Lama for two weeks. It was a wonderful experience. My latest experience with him was this year, January 2012, I was able to travel to him to his mon monastery in Pune. Stay there for two weeks. I met many of the monks, his consen, how they were living, and all the wonderful things, and how he grew up. Yeshua suffered tremendously. Even in his bed when he was in the hospital recently, rather than thinking of himself, he wanted to make sure I was comfortable there. Even though he was suffering, the nurses were putting needles in him and extracting his blood. He just wanted to make sure I was okay, I wasn't missing work, and that everything was fine with me. So no matter what, he always put others' feelings before himself. He was a great person, he taught me so much, and if it wasn't for the Kalmy community, I would never have met him. So I am grateful for the Kalmy community, for my husband, my sister-in-law, and I hope that we all remember Geshe. We still have a sangha with him. Geshe has a sangha that practices in Northeast Philadelphia. We continue to meet, and we will continue to meet on Sundays to say prayers for him, and his spiritual presence will always be with us. We need to learn a lot from him, to look at his actions, not his words, but his actions show so much. And when I said he was humble, humble, humble is a small word for what he showed others and what we can do with our lives. And rather than taking things personally, when you see someone suffering, and if somebody's acting in a harsh and angry manner, it's because they're suffering and they're just replacing their actions visibly. And we should have compassion for that person. And that's the most important lesson of yesterday is compassion. Always compassion for others. And you see them suffering. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Liz. Another member of the Khan community. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Adrian Caraboro. They call me a young Caraboro. And what I remember, what I remember about the exemption, totally now, a lot of us might look here. I met Gepcha when he first came here and stayed with uh, Gomba I don't know how many years it's been, but I always admired the person until he moved down to uh, Northeast uh, Presidential uh, Avenue. There I started appreciating the person more and more and more what he went through. What he had to do, okay? He took more agony and pain than you and all of us, okay? What do you think of enduring? But the thing is, there I found out how knowledgeable the person is. So much so that a lot of American people, do any of the people here in this room know that are on Gesha? He is a full seal of here. He should be called Dr. Manlong because he has a PhD. A lot of people don't realize he just lives there and prays and everything. He travels the world lecturing people, lecturing in Buddhism. People go to his place for religious lessons every weekend. The whole small place of the home is always packed with people in it. And I visited them many times, even though I, sometimes I felt like I was out of place. So a lot of us should admire the person. I do because he named all of my grandchildren Mongolian names. Even though they have a regular name of Peter and Alec, a little do we know that a lot of us Mongolians, we have names, our names of our own, okay? Middle, like, 
Ten Cent, my grandson, named after his holiness. Ted and the one in the group, twin boys, okay? And Ted and Kid, and all these names, okay? And I'll get you to name my grandchildren, because when, the minute they're born, I usually go over to his place, and he reads the Jodhpa. He reads the Jodhpa. It's a Bible. It's called Jodhpa. He reads it and names my grandchildren. And also, he taught, he taught me the strength. When somebody is ailing and stuff, okay? He has more pain than anyone I can think of, okay? So, I admire the person, not only because he's a Gesha, he was always a good Gesha. Even when he was still living, I used to call him, you are the, you are the, you're the person. Okay? And, and he appreciated it. My wife and I, we both just bring him three cases of water every, every month. Three cases of water. Whatever water we buy, I'll buy three extra cases. I'll take it all as well. Okay? And Sam, the ordinance place, we appreciate it very well. So I just want to say thank you so much for everybody coming here and memorializing our guests. So see you in Thank you. Thank you for the common community that we we have for many years. Get it over here with our community and uh, without no invitation is initiated and providing housing and temple and everything, this would not happen. And for us, he was a great spiritual leader and also in many ways we consult to him and uh, not only as father, but as an individual level, he is very kind to many of us. And even in the last, today actually, one month ago he was here in downtown Philadelphia. He was sick, but for the sake of Tibet, and to honor Tibet, he came to the hot summer, it was in the 90s, but he wants to participate in it. Uh, July 4th, Independence Day. That was our first day, first ever to have a parade, and he joined. He was really sick, but he really, because of his dedication for Tibet, as always he did, all the time, wherever there's a meeting or anything, he, he joined. So next is Catherine, and uh, she met Keshla over 20 years ago, and uh, please, Kathy. So, my name is Catherine, and um, I was in Jamsara in the late 1970s. I worked for TCB as a doctor in 1977, and I met many, many of the famous teachers. And those days, the uh, tutors of His Holiness were all alive, uh, Lingwa Puche, Dwayne Mo Puche, Sarakumbe Puche, many, many teachers. And Westerners knew all these famous teachers. And then I left Switzerland, I was living, I'm, I'm from Switzerland, to come to Philadelphia to get married in 87. And suddenly I was cut off from all these people that who were these famous teachers. And as you know, Tibetan and Westerners very well, we all take generals, one after the other, and then mix them up, take the vows, and it's a mess. It's quite known of Westerners. A video general, but then after that, mess it up. So I uh, came to Philadelphia, and suddenly there was no Tibetan, no, I didn't know any teacher. And I felt that I was uh, very mixed up. What shall I, how should I practice when I'm in Philadelphia? And finally found out about Eshamena, and he had, he was in this time here. He had two uh, Tibetan assistants, but they didn't speak very well English. So I asked for an appointment, and 
he said to me, I said, I explained to him my situation, and he said to me, you know, you have only one husband, only one kitchen, no need meditation, practice patience. And from that day, I saw he was the biggest teacher of patience I could imagine, and this is of course shown in his illness, how he took it. And I think that teaching for most of the Westerners that is more important to learn to practice patience, to practice healing these things, than to get too many blessings. And I'm forever grateful to Geshe Nama for that. And uh, I think it was it was a teacher that was not known enough in the I would say general Western community of people around Damansara and an enormous teacher of patience. And I'm very grateful that I can remember this with you today. Thank you. and uh, 